sit in that room on Tuesdays and give a class like this to a much smaller group of people, usually about four to eight people around the table. The way obesity medicine specialists work is that we talk to you for 45 minutes or so, maybe an hour, get to know your past uh, in regards to weight and, and diabetes, and then um, do a physical exam, brief physical, and then send you for blood tests. Uh, so when you're hearing us talk up here um, about if you have a problem, you should have got a thyroid test. I've already checked it for you. I mean, so if you come to a specialist who does this, I check the thyroid and the liver, the kidney, cholesterol, all those things um, ahead of time. And then the following week, you come back to a class. And um, this is the version of a handout uh, that I use, still use it to, and I'd like to share with you what's turning out to be uh, the ADAPT Keto pro Program or a uncomplicated keto approach. Any questions before we get started? Okay, good. <laughs> it's easier to do that with eight people around the room than however many are here. Um, hopefully I'll uh, address what's on your mind in here and take some questions at the end. So if you could take the handout and the booklet and open to page one, the preface. This is really nothing new. The ADAPT program was first described in 1863 by William Banting. And it was forgotten for, you know, the last 50 years. but. If you were going to help someone lose weight or fix diabetes from 1863 to 1963, you would have used this approach that I'm teaching you today. So it's uh, old and yet new. Uh, and uh, it's never really been easier to do a keto low-carb program because of all the new foods that are available uh, that are consistent with eating this way. But so, when, because the body burns what it's fed, when you eliminate carbohydrates from the food, the body is forced to start burning fat, including its own stored fat. And in England, up until the 1950s, if you wanted to lose weight, you were told to do the Banting diet. Do you, so, do you know what kind of weight you're trying to lose? Is it um, water weight? Muscle weight? Fat weight. Fat weight. Right, so we store extra energy as fat, and so if you're trying to lose weight, which is most of the reason, most of the time people are coming to see me for that, you want to start burning your own fat, and that's how you get rid of it. Okay? You know, even if you have a surgeon go in and take the fat out with, like, like all, uh, liposuction, if you don't learn how to eat correctly, the fat cells will just fill up again. So this is... Uh, a way to burn your own body fat and to keep it off, okay? Um, well, let's turn to page two, how it works. The ADAPT program changes the fuel your body uses from mainly sugars and starches to mainly fat. Your body is essentially turned into a fat burning machine. And being a fat burning machine is a good way to use up your stored body fat. So the science tells us that the elevated blood sugar in the second paragraph there, that's the pathway toward obesity and diabetes. And it's the hormone insulin that tells the body to make fat and to store fat. So really it's the carbohydrates that are fattening, not the fat in the food. And insulin is the mechanism by which the carbohydrates are fattening. Because insulin is secreted in response to an elevated blood sugar, a simple way to keep the insulin low is by eating fats that don't raise the blood sugar eating foods that don't raise the blood sugar, the fats and the proteins, and by not eating the foods that raise the blood sugar, carbohydrates. Make sense? Yeah. So if you want to burn sugar, eat sugar, or drink sugar. If you want to burn fat, eat fat. You couldn't say it, could you? Because <laughs> <laughs> we've been taught not to eat fat, but if 
as simple as like if you have a car and it's a gas burning machine, you put gas in it. If you have a body and it's a fat burning machine, it's okay to eat fat or to put fat in it. Okay. Um, of course, what's not said is that protein is the most important thing. And it's interesting to see all of this, uh, you know, but if you say a high protein diet, everyone gets upset about it. So uh, 10 years ago, we couldn't say high f f f fat diet. That would be stuttering, and, and even in some circles, you can't say that. But it, it, fat is just a fuel source, and you can actually burn fat for fuel, as long as you're not eating the carbohydrates. Our body burns the carbohydrates first, and then we'll burn the fat. So if you want to burn carbohydrates, go ahead and eat them. But remember, you're trying to burn the fat off your body, so don't eat the carbohydrates, and your body automatically starts burning fat. So in the third paragraph, when you eat this way, your body will be provided the nutrition that it needs. Don't worry about that. And the fuel that your body uses will be changed from mainly carbohydrates to mainly fat. It's particularly good if you're trying to control your blood sugar, reduce body fat, or enhance blood ketones. Thus, it's known as a keto, keto diet. So how many carbs, how low do you have to go? One way to measure the amount of sugar in starches is by counting carbohydrate grams or carbs. To increase your body's fat burning, we recommend you keep your carb intake to less than 20, 20 grams per day. That was found by trial and error in 60,000 people in New York City by Dr. Atkins. Well, but interestingly, Dr. Eads, Dr. Mike and Mary Dan Eads, who wrote Protein Power, in, and they worked in the Midwest in the US, they also found 20 grams total, not net, to be kind of the magic number that everyone would be in ketosis if you stayed under 20 total grams. That's where that comes from. And when you eat even a small amount of carbs, your body, you reduce your body's ability to burn fat. But if you've never counted carb grams, uh, five grams are in a teaspoon of sugar. So you have to avoid that. Bread, a slice of bread is 15 grams. Fruit, 20 grams per apple, 30 grams per banana. Flour, pasta, other food has a lot of carbohydrates, so you know those are way off the list. And a list of foods initially allowed is provided to help you in changing your eating habits. So on the page, page three, top of page three, the way this works is what you'll notice is that just after a day or two, your hunger will go away. And because you're less hungry, you'll eat less and start burning your own body fat, which leads to weight loss. Actually, this is not a weight loss diet. It's a fat burning diet. You're not going to whittle away to nothing if you have nothing, no extra fat on your body. Um, one person got up and left the room because she said, well, I'm trying to lose weight. And he just said, it's not a weight loss diet. <laughs> well, it's a fat burning diet. So don't, you don't have to be looking to weight loss for this to help in beneficial ways. Okay? I think you're an advanced group that can grasp that. Um, because you're less hungry, you'll eat less. In fact, there was a study that nobody cites based in, uh, published in 2005, where they put people on a metabolic ward, had them eat what they normally ate, and you know, a lot of carbohydrates, and then they gave them free access to these kinds of foods, and they automatically reduced the amount they ate and matched the amount of protein they needed to their size automatically. So it's that research that helps me feel fine about you not measuring too much, you know, as long as you're not going to wild extremes, uh, because I know your body's going to figure out how much you really need, based on that science that was published now, you know, almost 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, so page three again, when, as your weight decreases, your medical conditions improve, the medicines that you're taking will probably have to be reduced. That's my job, to help you get off those medicines safely. And there are also certain blood tests that we'll check periodically. People say it's helpful to have regularly scheduled appointments to ensure that they follow the diet by providing accountability. Or so being with a group, a community, uh, coaching, if you need that, uh, for the accountability, a lot of people need that at first. And I kind of think that, that I'm, um, uh, teaching someone how to ride a bike. You know, the first time you might fall over and skin a knee and go crying and, and okay, well, we'll come back the next day. 
or and so uh, the support should always be uh, uh, supportive and instructive and uh, allowing that for the fact that they probably won't get it right the first time and that's okay here's some resources we know uh, the it can be uh, f difficult to find trusted answers and so the adapt has created these resources the adapt youtube channel and facebook etc uh, turn the page now um, if you're sleeping please wake up now um, <laughs> This section is the most important section, and you don't have to remember anything else I would say today other than the foods on the next two pages. So it turns out that it's page four, five, and six in this, um, uh, this booklet. There was one book, oh, the purple one that, that you showed, um, Dr. Jeff, uh, actually had the page four information on page four and page five. And I met someone who only had page four from the condensed version. And she was really surprised to find that she could have cheese. Because it wasn't on the, anyway. So, you know, like Mark Twain said, you want to be careful reading a book written by a doctor, because you might die of a misprint. <laughs> but this is the bona fide certified, oh wait, what's, no, just kidding. So, uh, but um, it's just real food. All right, so this is the ADAPT Keto Program getting started, list of permitted foods. If it's not on here, you can't have it. It's black and white. Think of that, we've done the hard work to find foods that are tasty and low in carbs that don't raise the glucose and insulin. So the state of the foods on this list, it doesn't matter how the food is cooked. Cooking the food doesn't add carbohydrate to it unless you've added carbohydrate to it. So you can have the baked, boiled, stir-fried, sous vide, instapot, you know, it doesn't matter, you have it raw, just don't have carbs. Um, so that means no flour, no, no cornstarch, breadings like that. When you're hungry, eat as much as you want of the following foods. These foods really have no carbs, so you can have meat, poultry, fish and shellfish and eggs, you can have meat meaning beef like burgers and steak and uh, filet mignon and ribeyes if you want. Uh, pork, ham, bacon, lamb, veal, sausage, pepperonis, hot dogs, organ meats, like liver, kidney, sweetbreads. Um, no, no bun with the hot dog, right? So no, no bread with the burger, but um, you can have hot dogs. What is sweetbreads? Sweetbreads are, are um, <laughs> so it depends where you're from. It's different organ meats that some people think are not healthy, but they are. So they're generally, you'll find them in sausages. Yeah. Gross. Well, that's interesting. So if you're gonna do the carnivorous version of this, you gotta eat your organ meats. It's called eating nose to tail today. That's the, the uh, polite version way to say it. But uh, poultry, like chicken, turkey, duck, it doesn't matter um, where the food comes from. You know, I have a lot of Duke professors who are patients of mine, and, and one I recall goes to a, a grocery store called Whole Foods. Do you have them here? Yeah. And they call it Whole Paycheck in our area. Yeah. <laughs> well, he gets this fantastic mix of pheasant and duck and free range, organic. It's, it's low carb, it's great, it's keto, but it's expensive. I have another Duke professor, he didn't own a pot or a pan, and he was between marriages, so he only went to <laughs> fast food places. He would go to Biscuitville and Hardee's and in our area, if you ask for the car bowl, they won't give you the biscuit. I know when they kind of got it backwards, but it's called the low carb, but it, they call it the car bowl, and then you, know, you can go through the, um, greasy burger places and just not have the bun. And then he would also go to a fried chicken place and get the grilled chicken, not the chicken with a coating on it. So it doesn't matter if the food is fast food, or slow food, or it's expensive or cheap. Fish and shellfish, you can have tuna. It doesn't matter if the tuna is in a can, fresh or frozen, or if it's you know lying on, on ice, just freshly caught. Those are all low carb options. Um, you can have eggs, whole eggs. If you think about it, the egg is probably 
the perfect nutritional package. Think about it. You can make an entire chicken out of an egg. <laughs> yeah. and, and you need the yolks to make the cell walls of the chicken. Like, we need the yolks, we need cholesterol in our food. So don't fear the eggs. Don't avoid the fats, because you're a fat-burning machine, you're going to be burning the fat that you eat, and you should be eating less calorically, automatically. Um, you don't have to deliberately limit the quantities of these proteins, but you should stop eating when you feel full. Uh, one gentleman came back and said, Doc said I could eat all the bacon I wanted. So he had three pounds of bacon a day. Oh, God. Well, the thrill wore off. And, and it's actually kind of a new, uh, new practitioner um, desire. People early on when they do this want to make adjustments and all, oh, no, don't do that. And like, well, look, just wait. He's not going to do it very long, you know. After a while, the thrill's gone. A lot of weird things happen, even with the sweet tooth. You know, I mean, having two, two bowls of sugary jello a day, just to not have sugar. Well, that's okay. But the, again, it, it's going to wear off over time. Um, I met a researcher once who said I would feed people rocks if it would help them lose weight. What a bizarre thing to say. But it's because nothing that he did worked. It was all the low-fat idea. And actually, though, it's kind of like pork rinds. Pork rinds are very nutritious, but they have no carbs. So it's kind of like feeding people crunchy things that just don't affect the sugar and the insulin. And I wouldn't want someone to eat those just exclusively all day long, but they have no carbs. And actually, some people use those for coating for fried foods. Um, have you found on the internet there are all these people cooking things and comparing things, and there's a young couple, uh, they call themselves Keto Connect, and they did some chicken tenders and, and different coating, and then at the end of the video, they compared the taste and all that, and sure enough, it was the pork rinds that won. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of fried chicken, but if you really miss it, try it out. A lot of people love the pork rind coating, or for fish, or for pork chops, or in meatloaf, and, pancakes and yeah well you can even get pork dust pulverized pork rinds i had pound cake made with pork dust it wasn't exactly the same but it was close <laughs> you know i really didn't know much about pork rinds until i went to durham north carolina growing up in wisconsin at least back in the 80s 70s 60s there were really weren't pork rinds, but we had cheese curds. You know cheese curds? So, most people in North Carolina don't know what the cheese curd is. It's too bad. Um, um, so you might explore foods that, that other people know about and like, and that are low in carbs. Uh, all sorts of great cheeses. Again, from Wisconsin, uh, the cheese state. Don't avoid the fats, uh, but don't force feed the fats. So this is a common mistake I see. Um, sometimes I, I'm a detective, people come to me, they say, I was losing weight for two months and then I stalled for two months. I said, well, what happened back two months ago when you stopped losing weight? Well, I don't, no, 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 it's really important to know what happened when you stopped losing weight. Well, I started using this bulletproof coffee thing. Oh, I mean, you started drinking oils, and, yeah, it has no carbs. Well, but wait, wait, they say, it has Calories? Well, you said you don't have to worry about calories. I never said you didn't have to worry about calories. I said you should automatically reduce calories. And oh, on my program, the oils and cream and cheese and mayonnaise are all limited. Oh, so just be careful. We calculated this person was drinking 800 calories of oil and butter for the day. It's not hard to do. You know, the reason oils and butter are strictly limited on a low-fat diet is they have a lot of calories. You know, that was the whole rationale for the low-fat diet. And I met one of the researchers at the University of North Carolina, the other blue school down the street, um, and he said, well, we had no requirement to do a study. We, we just saw, well, there's more calories in fat than, than in carbohydrates, so we thought the low-fat diet would be fine for the whole country to do. What the heck? So naively, I think you have to do a study, you've already made a policy, uh, not 
not in this case. Uh, so those are the proteins. Now, protein comes first. If you're so appetite suppressed that you don't want to eat anything, which can actually happen, I do want you to have some protein every day. We think that that's the healthiest way to go about things. Um, it doesn't have to be a lot of protein, um, and uh, just have some protein. Um, of course, if someone had a history of an uh, eating disorder, we would ask for that, and I would be sure that you were uh, eating and uh, not getting back into those old habits. But I've seen this actually help people who've had other eating disorders, especially binge eating, um, where other approaches might not. Um, so protein comes first. It's not controversial, really. If you went down the street to my friends, the and colleagues, the weight loss surgeons at Duke, they would make your, be happy to make your stomach as big as a hen's egg, and then reroute the intestines so that if you do eat something, you don't absorb it all. That's called the Roux and Y gastric bypass. And they asked the world experts, what do we feed people when we make their stomach about as big as a hen's egg and reroute their intestines? And they said protein. So people come out of the surgery not eating fruit, not eating vegetables. They're drinking protein shakes. They're not making smoothies to get their veggies in. No, protein comes first. So any sound nutritional program will understand that. Okay. Um, green salad and green, and non starchy veggies are also, uh, should be eaten every day, but the amount is limited. So two cups of salad greens, and you can estimate a cupful by your fist. If you look at your fist, go home, compare it to a cup, measuring cup. Mine is exactly a cup. And then don't carry a cup around with you. You can estimate a cupful by a fistful. So two fistfuls of leafy greens for the whole day, not per meal, and one fistful or one cupful of a non-starchy vegetable on the top of page five. And that's for the whole day. You don't have to eat it all at the same time. You don't have to worry about when you eat all of this stuff, but that's the limit, the target, uh, so you wouldn't want to eat more. Yes? When you boil uh, vegetables, like let's say I, I like to make soup, so I like to put carrots in it. Um, if you don't eat the carrots, is that okay, or is it not okay to boil them? Yeah, so a couple great questions uh, in there. Uh, can I have carrots? or? or water that had carrots boiled in it. Uh, not, well, wait, are carrots on page five? No. <laughs> then no. <laughs> That's a tough question. I haven't really seen, you know, um, does the water taste like carrots? <laughs> So that's going to be an interesting call. It's probably not much carb if, if you're not eating the carrot itself. A lot of people then ask, well, is it cooked vegetables or cooked greens or uncooked? Well, you know, I have it up, not on here on purpose because it really doesn't matter. I mean, if you have a little bit more spinach, there are not many carbs in it. And actually, that's my marker for, okay, this person's going to be a little obsessive. <laughs> but that's important for me to know. And, and then I'll, I'll use different language. And then uh, on a prior handout I had, it said you must eat your vegetables. Someone came in just all upset, I'm not following it. Have been lost, you know, 20 pounds in a couple of months. Well, it seems to be working. She said, no, but I'm not eating my vegetables every day. Well, wait a second. You know, you're eating protein, which is what you need. In fact, you don't need to eat vegetables every day. But don't say it very loud. <laughs> Have you ever gone a day without eating vegetables? Yeah. yeah. Oh, see, a lot of people never have, or, or you're still hiding in the cave back there. Um, so, salad greens, non starchy veggies, do you see some that you like on there? And um, if you don't have high blood pressure or history of heart failure, we would recommend that you use bouillon two times a day, and this is to ease you through what we call adaptation symptoms or um, headache, fatigue that some people get. If you have high blood pressure or heart failure, the salt and the bouillon can make those conditions worse. So don't use the bouillon if you have those. Foods that are allowed in limited quantities include oils up to two tablespoons a day, cheese up to four ounces a day, cream up to two tablespoons a day, and then 
Also, you can have mayonnaise, two tablespoons olives, avocado, lemon, lime juice, soy sauce, pickles, adapt products up to two a day. How did that get in there? <laughs> um, we really focus on real foods, but every now and then it adapt products. Yeah. As you know, in the United States, just about every pre-made salad dressing, pre-made or made is going to have soybean oil in it. So uh, the question is, soybean oil is in all of this other stuff. Yeah, I really don't mention that in here, do I? That's a great question. So, could you hear? Uh, do soybean oils have to be hydrogenated oils have to be avoided? No, they actually don't. This works if you eat store bought salad dressing with soybean oil. Yeah. What? <laughs> yes. That's a great question, and it's a common misunderstanding that the most important thing is to keep the carbs low. Did I mention anything about uh, grass fed beef? No. About what? Grass-fed grass beef? No. Did I mention anything about omega-3s, omega-6s? No. So that's the, the new teaching about you have to have highest food quality. This has been around for 18, 150 years without attention to those details. So I think it's a less important, maybe some importance, I don't know. Now I'd love to see a study that actually separated out the food quality versus the non-attention to food quality. So take half of you, put you all in the McDonald's dollar menu, and the other half, you have to go to Whole Foods and make your own salad dressing. Oh, well, I'll help you do that. Uh, you know, and, and then we see the difference. There's no studies actually yet that say that makes any difference. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear? Were you worried about all that stuff? You don't have to eat your own meat. Oh gosh, didn't we say that in the book Keto Clarity? We may have said that. We, well, remember Jimmy wrote it and I helped. <laughs> so, I learned from Nurse Cindy, who's in San Antonio, uh, that you want to eat the highest quality food that you have access to and can afford. And uh, I mean, you cut to the extreme that this one person said, well, the burger wasn't grass-fed beef, so I just ate the bun. <laughs> so that is kind of crazy, right? Yeah, so it's more important to not eat the bun than to worry about where the burger came from. Yeah. Oh, so uh, when you look at the bulleted list of mayonnaise, olives, avocado, or, and oils, cheese, that's kind of the limit of, of all of them. It could be, you could have two tablespoons of oils and four ounces of cheese and two tablespoons of cream. So it's not or, it's and or, or and. Oh, could you have two tablespoons of whipping and two tablespoons of heavy and two tablespoons? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Well, you know, I once had someone who created an Excel spreadsheet with all of this on it. And he said, okay, you know, I had my oils, I had my cheese, I had my chicken, I had my fish. No, sir. You don't have to do that every day. So this is a menu to choose from, and those are the limits for each item. And, and the oils, cheese, and cream, and mayonnaise are limited because they're so high in calories. You know, I was told recently that I, by someone that I can't have mayonnaise in a jar in the fridge because it's a serving size, the jar. That's like me and peanut butter. And I have a jar of peanut butter, I can eat the whole thing. You know, so you don't want those things around. Um, did I uh, answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, for some reason, I thought that we were not supposed to have half and half that we were supposed to use heavy whipping cream instead. I'm not sure why I thought that. So you thought you had, couldn't have half and half right. and had to have heavy whipping yes. cream. Yes, which I've been so, doing. So there are these phenomena, phenomenal people, exceptional people, <laughs> who obsess about each little carb and carblet yes. 
half a car, a quarter car. And some people call them the keto police, keto, Nazi, you know, whatever you want to say. And um, again, I find it fascinating. It helps me teach them in an appropriate way. And I, you know, just filed in a way that this person is, you know, really concerned about every little micro carb. <laughs> But you look at it, it has to do with the total grams of carbs. Right. So if, if a tablespoon or two tablespoons of half and half have about 0.5 grams, mm -hmm. and a heavy whipping cream has 0.1 grams, oh. that's the difference. Is that the difference? That's like the difference. That small? Yeah, so you know, all of this information, you can look this up on the internet. Yeah, I do. Google or get a little book that has carb counting and all that. Oh, wait, I'm trying to make this easy for you. So you can obsess about all this stuff. You can go out and get the little calorie king guy. Got a king. Uh, got a crown. And there's a little book that shows you the calories and the carbs and all that. And okay. You can actually double check all of this for me. I would love it. Okay. Like, Thank you. Or you can just follow it. So okay. yeah, don't worry about it. half and half and all. And is it heavy whipping cream? Is it light heavy whipping cream? Is it? No, it's heavy whipping cream. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> So in that same light, if I'm if I have like eight carbs, you know, at the end of the day, can I have another cup of coffee with heavy whipping cream in it? So if I have eight carbs by the end of the day, so you're getting ten from your non-starches and salad meats. By the way, you're getting no, much well, not eating I, any of that. I I skip that. Okay, <laughs> so I skip my starches. You, so you skip this stuff. <laughs> Hang on, that's kind of, kind of a follow-up visit question, isn't it? Really? So it really depends on if, is what you're doing working or not. Yeah. So a lot of the changes that you make that aren't, you know, I don't go to bed thinking, <clears throat> she didn't follow page four or five. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I go to bed thinking, oh, that person didn't have success. How do I improve that? So if it's working for you, you're achieving what you want, and what you do might be different than what you do and different than you do, it's okay. Yeah, um, but it might not be okay. That's where it's, uh, you know, that's the follow-up in a coaching or clinical practice. We'll turn the page to page six. I'll, I'll try to get two questions in just a second. Uh, so zero carb snacks at the very top, and you can have as much of them as you want. But I know you're not gonna want much because you're not gonna be hungry. You can have sugar-free jello. It's probably the most popular sweet treat. If you miss fruit, I miss uh, my fruit, what am I, my, my bread. It's okay. You can have fruit flavored things. Uh, we have a product called Crystal Light. You see yes, that? Yes, yeah, Crystal or, Light. Yeah, you know, these other sweeteners that have no carbs, they're fine. Now, it wouldn't fit the bill for the food quality police over here, but it might be okay for the Sweet addicted person over here who's struggling to just stay away from, you know, lemonade. Are you there sugar-free popsicles? Are there sugar-free popsicles? You can eat those with your phone, right? Your good friend of mine told me their sugar-free popsicle has about six carbs. Oh, Total carbs, yeah. I know them well. You know how many carbs are in half of a six-gram popsicle? Three. Right? Why not, why not eat really great things and great foods and count it and worry about the carbs there and not worry about little things? It, you know, this works pretty well. So, pork rinds, chichurines, as much as you want. Roll-ups, uh, cheese wrapped in a slice of meat. It could be the, you know, bologna and um, string cheese, or it could be the prosciutto and mozzarella. And, you know, and you can get this all prepared for you already at the store and the cocktail party sorts of things and chopped for you or the shrimp is boiled and peeled. I mean, it doesn't have to take a whole lot of time. Someone came back and said, I just can't do it. I, I just can't prepare to spend all this time. I didn't know what was going on. So I explained that actually it doesn't have to take a whole lot of time. Um, so uh, boar horse and biltong are eaten in South Africa. That's a remnant of the uh, uh, Resurfaced, resurfaced of the Banting diet in South Africa, and my co-owners Glenn and Yale uh, Finkel 
are from Cape Town, uh, Johannesburg, now Cape Town. Um, Lemony carbs is the fat burning. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of the allowed food list. I think there was a uh, question here. Yeah. It's the meat that the bacon is made from. Um, but you know, you don't want to overdo all of that too much too. You can over consume these foods, but most of the time you'll actually eat less automatically. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that I'm clarifying something. So that I'm going to have this whole avocado for the day, but not well, you can't. If you wanted a whole avocado, you're violating page five. <laughs> Is there an exchange? Yeah. Well, so, um, of course. So if you look up the carb content of an avocado, you could do that right on your smartphone right here. And if you could stay under 20 total carbs for the day, it'll probably work. So I think an avocado is 10 grams, something like that, depending on the size. And, you know, so the, the quantity police over here and the quality <laughs> police over there, it's not perfect. You, you, and, you know, the macro police, you know, my fitness pal says it's six, not five. Oh, come on, please, you know, you can't get that precise with these kinds of measurements. You know, kind of the most difficult, most interesting patients are the engineers who, who apply because things are supposed to be scientific and actually things are supposed to add up and, and, and then they apply all this to a, a, a life, a living system that has adaptations and every time you try to reduce the fat mass it sends out signals to make you hungry and, to, and now, anyway, so um, the macro shouldn't, the um, app that you shouldn't tell you how much protein to eat or how much fat to eat, how many calories to eat, let your body tell you and uh, your body is pretty smart, actually. Yeah. I was a math major until I was a cow. A math major? So I could be an engineer, I suppose. <laughs> uh, the one question I've always had is, okay, that, that this bowl of greens, squish them. Oh, <laughs> is, that, is that cup of vegetable cooked and squished yeah. down? So is the vegetable uh, squished down? Or are the greens cooked in the cup? Uh, well, you know, of course, you're not supposed to use a measuring cup. That was just a comparison. Your fist is about that size, and so it really doesn't matter. So a, a, a uh, you know compressed amount of greens or vegetables is nothing like having a slice of bread. So it's much less carbs. So. Um, for most people, it, it's automatic. If you come back and it's not working right, then I get into all the, well, how are you doing it? How are you, how are you counting things and all that? As a first pass, just don't worry about it. So, okay, if you came back, you were at a stall, you said, oh, you know, I'm doing it right, I'm following it, I get into the detail of how much are you having. Well, I'm eyeballing, well, maybe we should be a little more precise. I'm smushing it down and, and well, yeah. Then I might have you check your ketones to see if you're actually in ketosis or not. But at first, you don't have to worry about that. Um, okay, so those are, remember, it's not on, the food's not on page four and five, and the top of page six, you can't have it. This is a corrective, it's just amazing. I'll have people who have tried everything. 
Uh, you know, and they legitimately have. They, and they've been taught by great people, and, and all. sometimes it's a net car thing that messes people up. Sometimes it's overconsumption of cheese, creams, or mayonnaise. And this, um, uh, it, it's really pretty amazing. And I, I didn't come up with this. It was actually Dr. Atkins and Jackie Eberstein who came up with this in New York City. And I was the one who went up and said, hey, I want to study what you do. Can I take that list, by the way? And so that Jackie Eberstein is on my team at the Heal Clinics, and so she's very comfortable and knowledgeable about using this kind of approach, which is the same approach in the Heal Clinics, too. So now, there are some possible side effects. This is page uh, six. Um, if you've not started yet, you might have some headache and fatigue the first few days. Um, you might get sugar cravings, and the best way to minimize your chances of getting these side effects is drinking lots of liquids. If you're thirsty, drink, and drinking bouillon or broth as long as you don't have a history of heart failure or high blood pressure. Fortunately, not everyone gets these side effects, so if you have those conditions, just don't use anything, and it should be fine. Uh, sugar cravings, if you are um, craving something, uh, it, doesn't mean you need it, right? It's a um, temporary thing, and thankfully the sugar cravings pass pretty quickly compared to other types of drug withdrawals. And you can temporarily treat sugar craving with sugar-free beverages like diet soda, crystal light, or the white Hawaiian punch, or something like that. Uh, sugar-free jello with a small amount of whipped cream on it. Um, not. Yeah, because there's a limit. Um, yeah. You don't think crave, so ask me if I crave fruit. No, I don't eat fruit. Do you smoke? Do you crave cigarettes? Because you don't smoke. Do you crave steak? Yeah. Hmm. How does that work? So the cravings will pass. You crave what you've been eating, and then you actually start craving the new set of foods that you're eating. Although in the uh, February, not yet January, in a weight loss clinic, is like hearing the confessions of <laughs> singers of the car beers over the holidays. And um, actually, that's the term for my nurse's aide that I have. He's called the uh, father of Roy who takes the confessions of the <laughs> consumption of carbs. Um, and then my guy is pretty easy because all the emotion is out and uh, just the facts. And turn to page seven, bad breath is pretty rare and it's interesting. When you're taught this way, I've, it's vanishingly rare in my clinic, the bad breath that some people get. I don't know if it's um, products that people are adding or extended fasting. Uh, I don't know what that is. Um, the constipation, most people uh, notice they have to go to the bathroom less often when they have a bowel movement, when they eat this way. How often you have a bowel movement is not a medical issue, but if you're having hard stools or hard to pass stools, it's called constipation, and there are a number of ways to address this issue. My favorite remedy is the teaspoon of milk and magnesia at that time daily for one week. If you have a pen, this is, shows that you've been to a class, you write down for one week after one teaspoon of milk and magnesia at that time daily for one week. Um, I have to make some incentive for you to hear the live version. It's a little extra pearl there. Milk and magnesia, as you heard um, today, uh, there are lots of different kinds, and there's something about the liquid form of milk and magnesia that's very effective. It will knock out muscle cramps as well, uh, and constipation. Ketosis, ketosis is great. It means your body is burning fat, and that's a good thing. This is called nutritional ketosis. Nutritional ketosis is commonly confused with ketoacidosis, which this is not, and pharmacological ketosis, these new drugs for diabetes that make your kidneys leak glucose. Now, this is not a good idea, to, to, but it's a commonly prescribed drug now, especially by cardiologists, because they did a big study and it showed it reduced heart attacks, but at the expense of causing some problems with ketoacidosis. So 
I had not seen a problem with ketoacidosis ever until this drug came out. There are these drugs, there are a set of them. So be very careful if someone's on a diabetes medicine, I will screen for the, they're called SGLT2 inhibitors, and I'll take them off um, right away. You can measure your urine or blood or breath ketones at home if you want, but it's not needed for most people. If your total carbs are less than 20, total, not net, right? Total grams are less than 20, you'll be in ketosis. Is it okay if we make this simple for you? Simple and easy and tasty and, yeah. Turn to page eight. Now, um, you've heard different methods today. The method that I was taught was kind of the all or nothing. Uh, you know, if you're taking the Band-Aid off, take it off fast, not slow. Uh, if you're trying to quit smoking, you, you do a quit day. Go through the withdrawal and then it saves the long term, oh, I'm just having one cigarette a day and then you're back to 10 cigarettes and 20 cigarettes a day. So this is an all or nothing carb restriction method. It's actually the method that's been most studied. Although I could find one paper where they did a gradual reduction in carbohydrates. Um, we use a total elimination of carbohydrates all in one day. But if you do slip, you just get right back on the next meal. So I know you heard that you would want to just count the carbs and take half as many and half as many. I, I don't, that might work for some people, but that's not the method that I use. So if you slip, get back on the next day. What we're learning now, though, is if you eat carbs even a little bit, it may stop the weight process for up to three days. And now I'm figuring out that, where did that come from? That was Andreas Ehenfeld's body. <laughs> He's dietdoctor.com. So the initial teaching came from normal people, where you're in ketosis, you eat a carb, you go out of ketosis, you're back in in three days. Well, now we're finding if you had lifelong history with weight problems, meaning carbs, you might be knocked out of ketosis for two weeks. Which just goes back to the idea of just be strict every day. Just don't succumb to the, oh, a little bit won't hurt, a little bit won't hurt. Um, and that's only because we're now able to study ketosis. There was a taboo about studying this. We, we were unable to get money to study it or even to write IRB pro proposals, but now we can. Um, vitamins and supplements, we do recommend a multivitamin without iron, unless you've been told to take iron for some other reason. Not a big vitamin pushing kind of uh, doctor. You get all your vitamins and minerals from the food that you eat. Very nutritious and very complete. So cholesterol, a lot of people ask how the way of cholesterol or the suede eating would affect cholesterol. The best way I can say it is that in the last sentence there, the suede eating reduces the cardiac risk factors by lowering the blood triglycerides and increasing the good cholesterol. And as we talked on the panel discussion, this is just the alternate reason for atherosclerosis that was kind of suppressed and forgotten because of the LDL focus over the last 30 years. So more than weight loss, if you have excess extra weight, you can, uh, you can expect to lose pounds and inches. Most people notice better energy levels, better appetite control. And we've done studies also with uh, not just obesity and diabetes treatment, but blood pressure gets better, irritable bowel syndrome gets better. We published studies, a uh, study on that. Polycystic ovary syndrome, the cause of infertility gets better. Um, fatty liver gets better. Um, heartburn gets better. Um, uh, it's pretty amazing. In fact, it's so unbelievable, people don't believe it. And so if you're, you're trying to convince another health system how to, don't tell them all this, because they won't believe it. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> well, you can tell the patients all about it, but don't tell another doctor because they'll say you're, you're just a quack, right? So, uh, but it is pretty amazing. Yes? Can you speak up just a little? <laughs> oh, so what do you tell the doctor after, after you've lost the weight? Yeah. Pardon? Just tell him he's a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I've heard the extreme. Is this uh, someone you like? Um, <laughs> I 
Some are, no, it changes. Um, I've heard here today even, you know, so-and-so doctor was following the keto diet themselves and the person who told me that was kind of pissed. Well, then why didn't you tell me? So, so the response could be, you know, the smoothest response I've heard is, say you're following a modified Mediterranean diet. Because most doctors, even cardiologists, have this false belief right. that a Mediterranean diet is best. They go, oh, well that's fine. And they don't know what it is. So they're not going to ask any details about it. Um, so a modified Mediterranean is pretty smooth. There's a uh, clinical group in the UK who's publishing a paper calling it a modified Mediterranean diet, the MMD, to get it through the, in the journal. Uh, so that's one strategy. Another one is to be pissed and say, why didn't you tell me about this? So I've had some people, you know, you've treated me for 10 years and I've gained 100 pounds. So you could be angry. You can, you can teach people about it. You know, I did that eh, low-carb keto thing. So it's uh, the style you want to choose. I do send around papers for doctors who say, well, I want to see research. And then I showed you a... Uh, website you can pull up in the doctor's office at the Public Health Collaboration UK um, and you can actually pull up all the studies within you know 30 seconds if you really want to shove it down their <laughs> throat. Um, so what about the fatty liver? What effects does that? Well it turns out it's the carbohydrate that gets turned into fat in the liver that creates the fatty so liver. That's correct. If you continue to follow the keto diet, you won't have fatty liver. Yeah. It's not the fat in the food that causes the fat in the liver. Oh, did you think that? Like every other doctor thinks? Yeah. No, I've even had a GI specialist. Well, they told me to cut out the fat in the food because I have fatty liver. Oh, no. Well, don't expect your doctor to know anything about nutrition. I mean, we really got no, no training. Even today, there's very little training. So we suffer from the same phenomenon that we get nutrition training from the companies that want you to buy their foods. I mean, where else would you get vitamin C if not from orange juice? Right? You have to have work. Well, well, no, no, it's fine. It's in the meat. It's okay. So anyway, more than just weight loss. So page nine. By the way, how am I doing for time? Can you check on me, please? Or, Okay, when am I supposed to end? 4.45. Five minutes. In five minutes. <laughs> Six okay. minutes. Okay. Six so you know, um, because Ms. Smith asked a lot of questions at the beginning, I'm a little short for time, and I'm just joking. So <laughs> let me fast forward to alcohol on page. None of you drink? Great. Next page. Um, top of page 11. You know, it's okay to drink alcohol every now and then, once a week. You know, um, alcohol, while it might not have carbs, it has calories. So you, now that you know that carbohydrates get burned before fats, alcohol gets burned before the carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So if you want to access your fat store, burn the fat, alcohol counts in that pecking order. So keep it to a minimum. I mean, there's kind of a five gram per drink rule that keeps you to less than one or two drinks per day. So that's uh, light beer, 12 ounces, or three or four inches of wine in a wine glass or one or two alcoholic shots. I had one patient who got a ketone meter and figured out the hard liquor that affected her ketones the least. You might want to do that. <laughs> or, or, yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty obsessive. Um, the thing is the um, alcohol can lower the blood glucose and um, has other stress-reducing effects. Um, just minimize. If you do drink every day and it's not working, I'll politely remind you that alcohol is not on page four and five. <laughs> and so I don't guarantee that it's going to work if you do have alcohol. And but your tolerance is low. Um, and then just look back for your reference at the rest of the program. I think maybe just let me take some questions. Um, I think there's one. Yeah. Um, on page 10, it says, don't attempt to follow a low-fat diet. 
if you have excess fat, why would you not want to use your own fat instead of adding fat? So don't For attempt example, to follow a low fat diet, meaning lean meats, okay. and uh, you do want to access your fat store, so don't overdo the fat in the food. But to say don't follow a low fat diet is to not go to the extreme of just having fish all the time because it's lean. I mean, it makes it too restrictive for most people. Yeah. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to point out on page 14, the difference between total carbs and net carbs. When you use total carbs, it's a little stricter, it's a little lower in the food that raises the blood glucose and therefore raises the insulin, but it's a little easier to. <laughs> so you only look at the carbohydrate content on the label, and I went over this on the slide. You don't have to subtract out the fibers or the sugar alcohols. Um, and that's going to be the safest way to count carbs in terms of you're not assuming that you don't absorb the fiber grams or that the sugar alcohols don't affect your blood sugar or your ketones. Yes? So what about ferritin? Well, um, of course I didn't mention that in the initial teaching. So you don't have to worry about ferritin because you had started. And then um, you're getting, uh, I would say it has a neutral effect. I mean, depending on what else you're eating. Um, uh, you know, men shouldn't take iron, extra iron in pills because we don't lose iron unless you're getting your blood drawn all the time. Some people recommend that, so I really don't think that of that as a big issue. Well, hemochromatosis is a different issue where um, you may want to be limiting the iron in the foods, then that's a special case. Yeah. Yes? I've had GERD and uh, heartburn. You've had GERD for and years, heartburn for years. Years, years, years. You shouldn't have and this. I've been, okay. Well, but now she is. I'm still going, do. my GI guy's taking me off of the Dexalent and everything I've been on, so I'm weaning myself off of all that. So when should my heartburn and everything stop? Or at least, you know, start tapering, being on this diet? Because the reflux does seem to be going down some, but I have a tremendous amount of heartburn. So what about heartburn? In the general use of this has gone in a week. And you can be off your medication within a week. We have a paper published on that. And so if it's not happening, I think of a couple things that you're, you know, you're really not following this strictly. So try to be real strict to it. Um, there might be some other hiatal hernia or anatomic problem. Well, I do problem. have a hernia. Oh, you do have a hiatal hernia. Mm. So it might not go away if there's an anatomic reason why you're getting acid going up in the, into the esophagus. But uh, that was one of those signals that 100% heartburn's gone, unless there's some complication. So does it hurt to take Gaviscon? So does it hurt to take Gaviscon? <laughs> Gaviscon, well, how many carbs are in it? <laughs> this time of year, I ask everyone who's stalling or not happy with their weight loss about new medications, including Flonase nasal spray. I'll bet five of you are on it here. I mean, it's so common. And that is like putting a steroid up your nose, and what well, is, and that can stop weight loss in its tracks. So I do ask about those things, even things like Tic Tacs and sugar-free gum. If you're you know, having that all day long and you add them up, two boxes of Tic Tacs, I think there's 40 grams of carbs in it. So um, just be careful with any of those things. Yeah. Can you uh, tweak your diet in keto to keep your total cholesterol under 100 tonight? Why? So the question is, can you tweak the diet to keep your total cholesterol number under 200? Because my company's vitality program is determined by health insurance rates. 200. Because the company's vitality program says your insurance rates depend on your total cholesterol number? Yep. One of four factors. One of four factors. So you might want to look up Dave Feldman and his, you, know, you eat a copious amount of fat for five days, mm -hmm. like high calorie, high fat, and it drives down your total cholesterol. 
and then you get your blood drawn. <laughs> and so, and so it's kind of been, so in our era, the, the metrics for health are, are messed up. And um, uh, even the LDL cholesterol was a reason that this diet was shunned. And, and so you, know, you can't do it when actually everything else gets better. And in a cruel joke or twist of fate in a recent paper, everything's lined up like you've seen in good and bad, uh, all the blood levels and all this. Everything is better. There are 24 things that get better. And the one thing that didn't was the LDL. Mm -hmm. That's good. No, that's good. Well, don't make that you've been in this second. So the current thinking, the current, the current thinking is that's enough to not allow a company to develop to develop a drug, just that one one thing. So we you have to go way back when Jerry Reven talks about metabolic syndrome, hyperinsulinemia. This is actually the root cause of atherosclerosis. It's been around a long time. It's just been forgotten, and our doc doctors today don't really know about it, sadly. Um, yes? Are there any um, supplements or types of supplements that we should avoid that can prevent us from going into ketosis? So are there supplements that can make you avoid going into ketosis that you should avoid? Uh, or I, I think it comes down to the how many grams of carbs. I, I will ask people to bring in their, their bottles, we'll look on them, we'll, we'll um, look out online. Often you can see if there's any sugar added to them, uh, but this approach has worked for years without any other kinds of supplements. There's no need for probiotics. I think the best way to change your microbiome is to change your food, to not eat carbs. So your microbiome adjusts when you change what you eat. You don't take microbiome bacteria to change what are you getting?